Hello and welcome YouTube. My name is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu and in this video I would like to show you how to install Unity and how the user interface of Unity works and how you can pretty much find everything in there. And I'm going to show you the basics of Unity within the next videos and then we're going to build whole games. Now the games that you're going to build are not all the games that I have as courses. So I have created this complete Unity 3D course which you can check out anytime. There you will find all of the videos and also the source code and so forth. But no worries, I'm going to show you around 30% or I'm going to upload around 30% of this course on YouTube. So step by step, I will upload the course and you can check it out. But if you can't wait and you want to progress very quickly, then you can of course check out the course. I'm going to add a link in the description with a huge discount. All right, so I don't want to sell too much. It's really about you learning how to make games and I want to teach you everything that you need to know here. You can get quite a lot of this stuff for free and I'm really about learning for free as well, but still I need to make some, some money in order to make a living, right? All right, so let's dive right into it and I hope you enjoyed this whole series. If you want to, you can of course subscribe in order to stay up to date and always be informed when the latest videos come up. I'm going to upload multiple videos every week, so check it out. And now let's dive right into it. All right, so in order to develop games with Unity, we of course need the software. And in order to find it, we can simply go to google.com and search for Unity 3D download. And then we'll see this page, download Unity, unity3d.com slash get minus Unity slash download. And that's where we can simply download the latest version of Unity. Now you can of course download the latest version, you can download the beta and we're going to choose Unity here. So let's go here and there you can use the personal version. So try personal because that's the one that we want to use as we don't want to pay for it and we don't have to unless we make serious money with Unity. As you can see, have not raised funds in excess of 100k. So if you have made more money than that with games, then the personal version might not be the right one for you. But here you need to accept the terms. So read through the terms of service, then you can download the installer for your operating system. In my case, it's Windows, but if you have Mac OS, you can also use that one. Now, you can of course use the latest Unity version, but there might be some changes in terms of the user interface and some other changes as well in terms of new capability and so forth. Now, if you want to use the latest capability and the latest features, you can of course download the latest version, but you can also go ahead with the same UI and the exact same version as I do by selecting the older versions of Unity. Once you're here, you can download from the archive. So as you can see, all the versions of Unity are available here as well. The one that I'm using in my course and in my videos is the one from Unity 2017. So in here you can simply select 17.1.1. So this is the one that I was using, Unity 2017 1.1. And it's really not that much of an issue using older versions. So if you want to use the latest one, then go ahead. But as I said, it's really not necessary. You can really go ahead and use the older versions because this one contains everything that we will need throughout the whole course pretty much. Here you can simply use the Unity Editor 64-bit and it will give you this Unity Setup 64 2017 1.1 FX. So I'm gonna save that one and it's going to download it and it might take a little while depending on the internet connection that you have. In my case it's like half a minute roughly. And once it's done you can simply open it up. Pressing the exe will open this setup here. Then you can simply press next. It's trying to connect. You have to read through the license agreement and accept it. Once you have read through it and you're really ready to go, then let's press next. You don't need to install Mono Develop because we are going to use Visual Studio instead of Mono Develop. So you can uncheck this box here and press next. And then you can simply decide where you want to install your Unity installation. Its space requirements are 1.6 gigabyte, but it will be a lot more based on the additional things that you will install later on. So the, the additional features and functionalities. So let's press next here 
and that will go ahead and install everything that is required in order to build games with Unity. So I'm going to pause the video until the installation process is done. And once the setup is done, you can see that you can simply run Unity 2017 1.1. So I'm just going to press finish and it will start up Unity. Once you're there, you can sign into your Unity ID and you can skip that if you don't have a Unity ID, but I personally have one because then you can simply also use the cloud functionality of Unity. So if you want to, you can simply sign in with Google, Facebook, or you can sign in with a Unity account. So I just signed in here and as you can see, there are my projects that I have and the Unity version that I was running it on latest and you can see this physics challenge and the VR shooter and so forth. I used them in the older versions of Unity 2017 1.1. But as I said, it shouldn't be a problem to use the latest version because it just converts everything. But if you want to have everything exactly and precisely as it is in my videos, then of course, please use the older version. So go ahead and open up Unity and then create a new project by clicking on the new button right here. Then you can give the project a name. I'm going to call that one Unity Basics. And I'm going to leave 3D as a, as a choice. We don't need any asset packages that will be required if we already have some assets that we would like to add. For example, if we have some graphical objects already, or if we have some functionality written somewhere already, we can add that here. Then the location is where it is saved on your machine. We can enable Unity Analytics or not. It will collect project data and provide the project metrics benchmarks against similar projects and insights to player behavior. As this is only really required as soon as we will publish the game, we don't need it for now. So now let's go ahead and create a project by pressing on the button. And then after a couple of seconds, Unity should start up. Then Unity opens up and as you can see, there is already quite something to see. A lot of different areas, a lot of different screen parts. And now let's have a look at each of them in order to understand what's going on. At the top, we have the toolbar, which allows us to change the way we can interact with the scene within Unity. So for example, we can, with the first one, we can move within the scene with the first button with this hand, then with the cross, we can go ahead and change objects positions within our game. With the third one, we can change the rotation. So for example, we can change our camera. As you can see here in the camera preview, we can change the perspective of our camera. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the video, which means we change the rotation. Then the fourth button is there to change the size of an object the scale to be precise. We will mainly do that within our inspector. We'll have a look at that in a second. And the fifth button is for UI elements. So for the user interface and all of those five are the transform tools, which allow us to change the transform component of objects. And in order to understand what the transform components are, we will have a closer look later on. Now, in general, what you have is the hierarchy view where you have all the different game objects, which are within your scene. So which are within your game or your level that you're currently in. Then you have the scene view, which allows you to see the game from a developer perspective where you can see all the objects. So let's just create a object real quick. Let's create a cube. This cube now is within our scene and we can see it here in the hierarchy on the left hand side. And this cube has a different perspective here in the game view. So this is how the game will actually look like if we start it now. In the scene view, however, we can move around with WASD or with the arrow keys and we can hold the mouse in order to right click, hold the mouse in order to move around in here. So you can see there are three objects in here currently in the hierarchy which is the main camera, the directional lighting, which is this little sun here and our cube. And each of them has a different kind of information in the inspector. So you can see that every single one of them has an inspector view. And in that inspector view, you have multiple information. You have, for example, the transform component, which is always active for every single 
object that there is, you will have a transform component. There are no game objects which don't have this transform component. However, they differ in other components. So for example, the main camera has a, has a camera component, a GUI layer component, a flare layer, and so on. Our cube has a transform component, a cube component, a box collider component, and a mesh renderer component. You don't really need to understand yet what all of those are. We will cover them later on. It's just important for you to understand that the inspector gives you detailed information about the game object that you currently have selected. Then we have the asset store here in the center as well. In here, you can search for assets. They can either be free or paid assets, which you then can use for your games. So for example, if you want to have specific graphics and you find them in the asset store, you can use them for your game. However, you have to, of course, consider how much they cost. Many are free. You can find very great assets for free without having to pay anything. Then we have at the bottom our project view, which allows us to see all our project elements. So for example, all the assets that we have. And assets could be anything. It could be any script. It could be any player object, any graphic, any kind of resource that we are using for our game. And that is physically stored on your hard drive. You can find it in the projects folder. So for example, if I create a C sharp script here, and I'm going to call it test, then I can reveal it in the finder via right click and reveal in finder. And that will show me my test.cs file. Then you have the console, which allows you to see programming relevant information that you can debug, for example, or that you can print via code which allows you to see where in the code you are currently or what kind of code was run at a specific point and so on. We will use the console later on as well. These are not all the relevant windows that there are. You can, for example, go to window and you can find the windows here as well. So for example, if you somehow manage to get rid of your game tab, you can always find it under window game and it will be opened up as a pop-up. You can drag it into this area here in the center again. So to summarize it, we have the hierarchy view on the left-hand side. We have the toolbar at the top. We have the scene view in the center. When clicking on the scene, we have the game view if we click on game. Then we have the inspector window on the right-hand side and the project window at the bottom. But that doesn't have to be like that. And I'll show you what that means in the next video. But before that, I want to show you some more buttons. We have those two buttons here, which I haven't covered yet, and they are transform gizmo toggles. We will use them later on when moving an object. So for example, we have this object here and it has a position and it has a local position or a global position and we can center it or pivot it. What that means will be covered later on. Then we have those three buttons here, which is play, pause, and step. So this one will start the game, this one will pause the game, and that one will go to the next step. So for example, if I run a play button or press the play button, I'll go into play mode and we can see I'm in the game view now and I can see our little cube here. All right, so we will see in the next video how we can change our setup and change the interface to our liking. See you there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, then leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, if you really love the content and you would like to have more of it or pretty much all of it, then of course, check out the link in the description to my whole course. See you in the next video. Yeah.